Hello everyone. Welcome back again to Power Electronics Simulation Lecture 2. I'm Nanad Gaikwai from Mumbai, India. Let's start. Today we are going to study an important device. It's called as a diode. Okay. Let's start. So the symbol of the diode is given by this rectangular shape and this line in front of it. This side is the anode, that is positive side. This side is the cathode, the negative side. Okay. Let's see what is the diode actually made up of. Okay. Okay. So this is how a diode actually looks. Still a graphical representation, but more insightful. So it is made up of semiconductors. What is a semiconductor? The silicon, germanium, these kind of materials are called as semiconductors. So what is this end region? This is the region in which there are electrons in plenty. This is the positive region or the P region where there are electrons in less quantity or holes are present in more quantities. What creates this extra electrons and extra holes over here? If we consider an usual normal silicon or germanium crystal, they are tetravalent. So each atom of silicon or germanium shares every electron in its outer shell with four other silicon or germanium atoms. Okay, so if a small amount of pentavalent element like phosphorus is added, then what happens is to maintain the crystal structure, the four valence electrons of phosphorus are shared by four silicon atoms but still the fifth valence electrons remain and this extra electron is available for conduction and this causes the end region to become negative okay let us talk about the p region the positive region so similarly we can take an element like boron which has trivalency or three valence electrons in the outermost shell. And if we dope the silicon or germanium crystal with small amount of boron, then every boron would be covered or surrounded by four silicon or germanium atoms and three valence electrons would be shared by three silicon and germanium atoms but for the fourth one for the fourth silicon and germanium atom surrounding the boron atom there wouldn't be the fourth electron as boron is trivalent and hence a hole is created that is the crystal structure can accumulate one more charge in that place to have a stable crystal. Okay, so these are two different types of semiconducting materials the n type and the p type. So, when the p type and n type semiconducting materials are joined together at this region, there a diode is formed. Now what happens at this region? Now there are excess electrons in the end region and there are holes which are seeking electrons. So the electrons from the end region travel to the holes in the P region. It becomes positively charged. The P side becomes positively charged as it is bereft of electrons. The end region near this junction it becomes negatively charged 
I'm sorry. The negative region would become positive. The n-type region would become positively charged as they lose electrons. And as the p gains an electron, it becomes negatively charged. And a depletion layer is created. Okay? There is a potential now. In the n region, there will be positive charge. In the p region, there will be negative charge. And in order for the electrons to cross over to the other side to fill in the remaining holes, they have to travel across this electric field in this junction and they don't seem to have enough energy to do that at a certain point of time a certain point of distance so a depletion layer is created which hinders the further movement of electrons from the N region to the P region okay so this is state is called as the zero biasing like this is stable if we connect a wire to the P type and the N type no current will flow because the electrons are impeded by this electric potential in the depletion region so how can we pass a current through this okay let's see so what happens? This is the forward power. The P region is connected to the positive terminal of a battery. The N region is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Now what happens is that the positive terminal pushes the holes towards this side, that is to the N region and the negative terminal at the end region pushes the electrons in the end region towards the P region. So we can say that a conventional current of holes flows from the P region to the end region and this completes the circuit. And the circuit is completed only when the positive side of the battery is connected to the P region and the negative is connected to the N region. Okay? In this forward biasing, what actually happens is a opposing electric field is created in the PN diode. Opposing in terms of the depletion region field. The electric field produced by the battery is in opposition to the electric field present in the depletion region and hence the depletion region reduces, shrinks in size and there is a free movement of electrons from N region to the P region. That means there is a free movement of holes from the P region to the N region completing the circuit and hence we get forward biasing. That is a current can be passed through the diode. Okay? Let us see what happens when we interchange these terminals. This is called as reverse biasing. Okay? Now the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the end region. The negative terminal of the battery is connected to the P region. So the holes are attracted towards this negative terminal. The electrons are attracted towards this positive terminal. The depletion region width increases. As it increases more and more, then there is no current actually flowing in the circuit. Because for the current to flow, the electrons have to move across the depletion layer to the positive region and back again. This is not happening. What is happening is that the electrons are getting stuck to this positive side. The holes are getting stuck to this negative side. 
and in effect the depletion region is increasing okay so if we see in the terms of electric field what is happening is that the external battery is providing an electric field which aids the electric field inside the depletion region which is also in this direction and hence no electron from the end region can pass to the P region to complete the circuit. This is reverse biasing. That is, if we have a battery which is connected <coughs> to the end region with its positive terminal and to the P region with its negative terminal, the diode would act as an open circuit. There is no current flowing. Okay? Let's see the characteristics, the VI characteristics of diode. Okay, so these are the characteristics of a diode. This axis represents current, this axis represents voltage, this is positive voltage, positive voltage is the voltage when the P side of the diode is connected to the positive of the battery. Okay, let's see what is going on. Now in forward region, as the voltage increases, there is no appreciable increase in current. That is because there is depletion region and there is a very small amount of current flows through that. But once the depletion region voltage has been reached, that is the knee point, which is this region, the current becomes almost linear with respect to voltage. Okay, like this. This is the conducting region of the diode. This is the non-conducting region in the forward direction. Okay, at this point, the electric field of the battery overpowers the electric field of the depletion region and the depletion region shrinks to a very small amount. So, okay. Let us see what happens when the polarity of the battery is reversed. That is the negative of the battery is provided to the positive terminal of the diode. So, as the voltage increases, it aids the depletion region field and the field gets wider and wider and no current flows. Okay, as we have seen in the reverse biasing condition, no current flows. But to what point no current will flow? Okay, so at till the point of reverse breaking down voltage. At this point, what happens is that the, the minority carriers, that is, the holes in the N region and the electrons in the P region become so energetic that they can cross over and the circuit completes. Okay? Circuit completes and the entire crystal structure of the semiconductor diode is destroyed at this point and hence the current becomes independent of voltage over here it becomes almost exponential okay so this is reverse breakdown voltage that is the voltage in the reverse direction at which there is a scener or avalanche breakdown of the semiconducting devices. This is caused 
due to the minority carriers in this like the, there would be some holes present in the n region there would be some electrons present in the p region they would gather so much energy that they would break this depletion region the entire crystal structure and current would flow like this okay and there would be no resistance it would be pure flow of current independent of the voltage and at that point your diode would be useless okay so we never want our reverse voltage to be greater than reverse breakdown voltage okay so the biasing condition is zero bias no external voltage potential is apply applied to the pn junction diode A reverse bias the voltage potential is connected negative to the p type material and positive to the n type material across the diode which has the effect of increasing the pn junction diode's width increasing the width of the depletion region so forward bias the voltage potential is connected to the positive to the p type and negative to the n type material across the diode which has the effect of decreasing the pn junction diode's depletion region width okay so conditions for conduction when will the diode conduct so by now we understand the diode will conduct when the anode is positively charged and the cathode is negatively charged okay and the voltage should be greater than the depletion region voltage okay so that there is enough energy to the carriers to cross across the depletion region okay so the conduction condition is anode should be positively charged cathode should be negatively charged and the potential difference between anode and cathode should be higher than that across that of depletion layer for germanium the depletion layer voltage is 0.3 volts and for silicon it's 0.7 volts okay so if you give 0.8 volts to the anode of a diode which is made out of silicon then you will probably get some current out of it below 7 volts or 7 volts diode would act as an open circuit non conduction the anode of the diode has a potential that is lower than that of the cathode and it should not exceed reverse breakdown voltage because we know if it exceeds reverse breakdown voltage there is an avalanche breakdown and the current becomes independent of voltage and it increases exponentially okay Now there are some important ratings for a diode as the peak inverse voltage, and as related to the reverse breakdown voltage. That is, how much inverse voltage can the diode sustain without undergoing an avalanche breakdown? Then the second important rating. is the rated forward current now any diode will have this rating it cannot conduct any increasing amount of current there will be a limit as a physical device it will have some limits so there are two important ratings peak inverse voltage and rated forward current Okay. Applications of diodes. 
they are used in uncontrolled rectifiers and is of really big use of these diodes and then it can be used as a unidirectional switch you will see about these in our simulation lectures okay thank you